Hello, it's Helder here. So, rucking has been gaining in popularity over the last few years. Uh, people are getting out there, enjoying nature, and experiencing uh, both the benefits and the enjoyment of rucking. And let's face it, it's easy to get started. Uh, most people can get started with just items that they have laying around their homes. On one of my recent rucks, I had quite a few members participating for the first time. Many questions arose from training to nutrition to items that they should pick up and uh, add to their gear list for their rucking needs. Since this seemed to be a popular topic for our ruck, especially with the beginners, I figured that I would share what I feel are uh, essential items that you should have in your rucksack or pack while you are rucking. So let's get started. So I'm going to assume here that basically your shoes, socks, and pack are a given. Uh, once again, each one of those subjects pretty much require their own video and explanation because there are a lot of nuances that make a difference uh, to make sure that the pack is the right pack for you. And if you are interested in hearing about those things or finding out more, at least through me, uh, be sure to comment below. And if I have enough uh, comments or enough desire for it, I'll sure I'll go ahead and take the time and make that video. So starting out, an extra pair of socks. Usually midway through the ruck, or if we get caught in a storm, anything like that, that's always a good time to go ahead and uh, change over your socks. So you want to make sure you have at least one pair of socks. Having a couple pairs is even better. And once again, depends how long your ruck uh, is. Just as a standard practice, always have an extra pair of uh, socks in your uh, pack. Now water. Water is obviously a no-brainer. We know that we need it and we need to suck a lot of it down while we are rucking. Uh, what I prefer is to use a hydro pack, even though I do carry other containers uh, with me, especially when, uh, when I have my dog with me, uh, just uh, so I have enough. And uh, the hydro pack is convenient, and basically it makes it, it encourages you drinking water. Because, uh, uh, you know, once again, the old adage, if you drink when you're thirsty, it's too late. So you want to make sure it's something that you're doing periodically. And I like to use uh, the hose, let's say, on my camel back so that I could go ahead and uh, be hands-free. And at the same time, it's always there. It's an easy process. And uh, when I see that hose dangling, it uh, sets off that alarm or it sucks some water down. A tracking app. Uh, a lot of these apps are free, uh, regardless if you're using you know, Apple or Android. And you can go out there and it's just something that uh, most of the time, of course, if you're rucking out there, you're in a group, preferably. But if you are rucking solo, just something else that you don't need to think about. So uh, if you do have that app going, not only is it counting your miles, but uh, a lot of times it'll announce it, let's say, at every mile so that you'll know exactly if you're on track, how far in you are, how much longer you have to go, and of course, your pace. So, uh, you know, if you want to try to think the least amount as possible and just focus on a mission, let's say, while you're rucking, or depending on what the purpose of your ruck is. So uh, something else to not have to track or think about is also convenient. Oh, you want to think about snacks. Uh, you want to think about food, fuel. Once again, depending on your mission. Uh, for me, I like to be on the move, so uh, bringing some uh, protein shake powder and uh, you know, just using one of the containers that I have, shake it up, consume it. I could either do it briefly, let's say on a, uh, on a small break, uh, a bathroom break, head call, whatever you would want to call it. And um, at the same time, there's other options where you know, we are out there rucking and we factor in having a nice long lunch break, especially if it's a scenic route or a scenic view. Um, let's say, and then, uh, you know, we'll have, uh, we factor that into the ruck, and then you can be a little bit more elaborate with your, uh, with your snacks or with your food, but always keep in mind, nothing heavy, no heavy meal, uh, because, you know, you're still going to have a lot more rucking to do after you consume that snack, so you want something that's going to burn, burn quickly, uh, but once again, that's a lot more detail that we could get into in a later video, depending on the purpose of your ruck. A first aid kit, a uh, small first aid kit, so it's something that's imperative to have with you, but especially when we're rucking and uh, specifically even addressing uh, hot spots and blisters, uh, which are very common. So that alone uh, warrants having a uh, first aid kit with you, let alone anything else that could happen uh, throughout that ruck. Comms, uh, communication. Uh, most of us will all have our phone on us, but there's a lot of times where that phone's not gonna work, especially if you're uh, like uh, exploring like I do within your rucks and go into less than traveled paths. Uh, so when that happens, it's imperative to have some form of communication from something as basic as having a whistle so that somebody could find you in case you do break a leg or uh, 
uh, other situations that happen out there uh, to a ham radio that uh, even if you're not licensed, you'd be able to transmit in an emergency to get you or someone in your group uh, out, of, uh, out of a serious situation. Illumination. Okay, you want to think, of course, not only having a flashlight, but having uh, the reflective tape, uh, reflect, reflective uh, uh, jackets, uh, reflective things on your covers, on your shoes. Uh, because a lot of times, even if it's a beautiful day and all of a sudden it just changes over and it becomes hazy, becomes dark, other times we might be rucking through tunnels and being able to have that signal, especially for oncoming traffic or, uh, or whatever, you know, is always uh, something to keep in mind. Okay, your ID, money, wallet. Uh, you <laughs> wouldn't believe how many times we're heading out on a ruck, we're in the middle of something, and now let's say it's needed for whatever uh, the purpose may be. And uh, there's always somebody or a couple people in a group that turn around and say, ah, I left it in my car. And now we can't do whatever we were doing because let's say it required some kind of ID or uh, even they needed access to money or a credit card because, uh, you know, you just never know. So it's a wallet. Why not? Your ID. Okay, thinking about rain gear, not only personal rain gear. Uh, it could be, once again, a beautiful day and you're out there and all of a sudden the sky just opens up. But uh, also, let's say having a tarp because if you do want to ride it out, and uh, there's all sorts of tarps out there, very light tarps, uh, inexpensive tarps, and just have something that if you are in that open area and you're, let's say, in the middle of your ruck and you still have, you know, ways to go, you might want to ride out that storm a bit. And being able to put up a tarp, you know, especially if there's three, four, five, six people in a group, uh, you know, if you heed to that little bit of advice and get caught in that storm and you're unfortunate, you will thank me later. Uh, some paracord and duct tape. And primarily, if something does go awry with your pack and something breaks, uh, pretty much paracord and duct tape will come uh, saving the day. So be sure to have uh, some of that on you. A GPS. Uh, once again, most of our phones all come with a GPS, but uh, a lot of times when you really are out there more in those isolated areas and you're not near a cell tower, you're not going to get that signal. So having access to another uh, GPS, especially if you're wandering and more of an exploratory type ruck uh, where you didn't have a set, let's say, uh, uh, location that you were rucking to and you aren't familiar with your area, being able to have that backup GPS with you uh, could definitely save the day. Lip balm and sunblock. Even if it's not sunny and uh, you'd be uh, very surprised you know, how you could get a good sunburn even when it's a nice cloudy day. Uh, lip balm, same thing, just windy, uh, wind's hitting out you, you're out there, you're exposed to the elements always a good idea to uh, take care of that because those little things it's what's really gonna bother you you might have a heavy ruck on you might have a lot of distance to go that's not bothering you but now chapped lips and uh, you know burned shoulders and burned face those type of things are definitely a no-go and uh, not gonna be very encouraging in the middle of a ruck sticking along those lame, uh, same lines a uh, cover or a hat of course once again to protect you uh, from the elements as well as with me I tend to sweat a lot so it helps to contain that sweat keep it out of my eyes uh, so, once again, multiple purposes, but, uh, you know, a cover, a uh, hat is uh, certainly suggested. Shemag. And uh, once again, no, not to look cool and, you know, look like some elite operator. Uh, but it comes in handy for a lot of different reasons. And uh, especially when you're rucking, because you can add the extra padding uh, comfort. You know, especially if uh, your pack, you might not have that proper pack or it's not set up properly and it's digging into your shoulders. So, uh, you know, Shemag can definitely help you out with that a sling for first aid, um, pack repair, wipe the sweat off of your face. And, uh, you know, especially today's day and age for uh, social distancing and a uh, face barrier. Um, you know, once again, on a ruck sometimes, and a lot of times we're in the city, you know, we're in the suburbs, you want to pop into a little mart, mart or you want to pop into a bathroom, something like that. You're going to need a face covering. And once again, if I'm going to carry a certain tool, why not carry something that's multifaceted like a uh, Shemag that can help me for you know a bunch of different things rather than just carrying an extra mask or an extra this and items that are just more to keep track of and uh, you know to me become a pain where I could have more of a multi-purpose tool with the Shemag. So keep in mind these were just a few items that I consider essential. I actually do have many more essential items that are particular to me and the more you ruck they'll also be particular to you and you'll have your own uh, list and whatever you really feel that uh, you need uh, for that ruck. And of course, depending on the location, depending on the climate, uh, that has a lot to factor in also of things that I might be adding that I'm gonna consider essential 
because now I'm there or I'm going to be dealing with that type of weather. So a lot of this changes, but uh, you know, I just want to cover a few that I feel um, you know, are musts uh, for rucking. And uh, the cool thing about rucking is we're always looking to add more weight, so why not add it with items that you might actually use throughout that ruck? They might actually be important rather than actually buying things that you're putting in there just to add extra weight and might never have another purpose for that tool, whether it's a plate, whether it's uh, sand. Uh, I mean, great, I have all those things too and there's a purpose for them. But uh, I'm just saying for me, I prefer to have my uh, ruck packed with things that I'm actually gonna need and use, possibly not on that ruck, but any rucks for the future, right? So why not practice with something that you're actually gonna utilize or um, might have a chance of being utilized as opposed to just a one dimensional object that you're gonna spend money on and throw on a pack just because you wanna have add weight, uh, you know, to each their own. Once again, this is Helder. I hope that you found this information useful.